Okay, we, we are live already? Yeah. Awesome. Um, we're going to wait for a few more participants. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. How's it going? <laughs> we, 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 are, we, we are already recording and uh, live. We are waiting for a, a couple more attendees. So I, I only saw one question in the in Slack, uh, no in Slack, no in in Stack, that wasn't really Bluetooth related. Uh, let me see. Okay, the, the, it's uh, I mean, the question is, does someone know how to integrate the Bluetooth talk snippets on Sublime text? Uh, <laughs> that's kind of tricky. <laughs> I know I, the, the, the actual uh, docs are just HTML files. So they don't adjust to the language server protocol uh, API structure so i don't think you can just serve them inside your browser like you cannot use the language server protocol for that and i'm not sure what to try to do ash but um yeah i don't think it's possible to just maybe if you have a parser that translates html to whatever structure the lsp needs but as they are now, it's not possible. You have to just uh, generate them uh, in a simple in, in a browser. Okay, if anyone, any attendees have any questions, feel free to raise the hands and or start talking.
I see in Discord that there, there was some discussion about how to apply uh, parameters to a parameterized script using Lucid. That's once you arrive to the latest uh, lecture, you will see because that's already been covered by Lars in just the latest one. Uh, let me see. Mm. I'm scavenging Discord too for questions. Okay, if you if anyone has any trouble trying to run the week weeks three uh, front end, make sure you change the block for key to yours before running the the example. And I think that's it. Okay, here's the question, a couple of questions. Antonio Hernandez asks, let's see. In the previous iteration of the PPP, state machines were discussed. A thread token was automatically generated. From previous last comments, it seems to me that the state machine tooling is being deprecated. So is there a set of best practices for minting thread tokens. Um, not, not sure if it's been deprecated, it's just not being used because it's way more expensive than doing it by hand. Um, but I think like it's not so complex to make sure that you consume and generate and to that you consume a UTXO with a certain NFT and generate one with the same NFT. I think that's pretty much it. You have to make sure that the NFT comes in and goes out because the fact that it's already an NFT, you don't have to make sure that it's a single output or whatever. There's no extra checks needed. Hmm. Not sure if you need to do something else. I don't think so. Okay. Adam Rashki, I hope I said that right. Uh, let me see, answer like. Hi, referring back to week's four lecture, is there a way to run the node and also the Cardano CLI GUI in Windows? I've not managed to do it, thank you. Um, I think Luca can answer that. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've tested the Cardano CLI GUI on uh, Windows and Linux and it both worked. So I had no issues. I did notice that on Windows, sometimes the fonts get distorted distorted, uh, so I am advising more to run the GUI on a Unix style OS. I will now this week also add an um, installer executable file for uh, Mac, but if you do not manage to run it with the um, executable file, you can also try it out running it by hand by simply typing Python and the name of the GUI. It's also explained on the GitHub page. But for that, you need to have installed beside Python 3, also the PyQt5 library, which you can install with pip. And this is also explained on the GitHub page. Awesome. Thank you, Luca. You're welcome. 
Uh, he seems to be having a problem. I'm. He shared a, li a link, a link to the Discord. Right. Mm, I will see if I can share it. First, I have to find it. Expand. And hey guys, anybody see show here? WSL Ubuntu. I found same question as as you just answered, uh, Luca, and then uh, I have a parsing issue with topology file. He had an error with the key local roots not found. This was the original file. Okay, he shared the, the two files, and, but I managed to hack the preview testnet topology. Your, um, Luca, your GUI uses a preview testnet. Uh, so the demonstration in the video was for the preview testnet, but you could also use it for the pre-production testnet because you can you just have to change the testnet magic number from two to one, uh, and it should work. Okay, so Yeah, it must, it must uh, he's having an error, an error with the topology file, but it might be a mismatch between the actual binaries and the, the topology. So this is then more a Cardano node issue. It looks like it, because... You, you didn't hard code the the magic file or anything, right? In the... I mean, the default value is set to two. So for the pre-production testnet, the testnet magic number. But I also explained that in the developer tab, you can change this number. Oh. Uh, so you can set it to one. Perfect. Um... No idea what, what's the error with local roots. Yeah, he added another comment. Oh, let's see. Okay, yeah, Adam. Um, if he, he says he's going to try again and uh, from scratch uh, sure like resetting everything and trying from scratch is many times has solved my issues <laughs> uh, but if you happen to face the issue again uh, let us know in the in discord i already saved the the message to you sent uh, to see if i can uh, debug it with more time uh, I hope, hope we, we help a, a bit, at least. Okay. Anyone has any other question? I think it was too easy. We might need to make the lessons harder from now on. <laughs>
Anyone from the team has any comments about what happened this week's in this week in the in Discord? No. Okay, we might be able to end <laughs> cricket noises. Dennis is always here. Like every Q and A, he Dennis is one of the first ones to be here. <laughs> Okay, so we might be able to cut this short. Next week, this week actually, this week's lesson will be significantly harder. So I'm guessing we'll have lots of questions next week. Next week. No problem, Dennis. Yes, Albert. Yes, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can okay. hear you. Um, just a quick question regarding the uh, uh, the new lessons that should be made available. I'm just wondering what is the, like, how often should they expect new lessons to be available? That's all. Oh, okay. Uh, the Haskell course. Um, so I with, with all the Bluetooth Pioneer stuff, uh, We've, I've been very busy, but uh, I'm, I have the next lesson already pretty much ready to go. I have to record it and edit it. Um, hopefully next week that uh, we will cover, uh, I think uh, we will cover Marlow. Uh, we will use Marlow's tools and I will have more time. By then I will try to publish the next uh, Haskell course in SO. Sounds good, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Also, of course, after we end up with the Bluetooth Pioneers, I will have way more free time to keep publishing as before. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I think it's a great resource, especially for those who are just starting. Uh, when I first, uh, before I started the lectures, I went through the Haskell course of what was available and it was a, it was a big help. So yeah, thanks for that. Awesome, awesome. I'm glad, I'm glad. Okay, so if everybody's okay, maybe we can finish this now. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. You're welcome, Adam. Have a great day. Have a great day, everyone. I'm not sure. I think Karina needs to shut down the session. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.